Hello, and welcome to the Astro Energy Astrology Show podcast with astrologer Shelley Overton. Hey everyone, it's Shelley. Welcome to the June 17th edition of the Astro Energy Astrology Podcast. And I am here in the backyard. That's not really a pretty picture. Maybe we can get you something nicer here. How about that? <laughs> it's a little bit nicer. Anyway, I am just moving around here, trying to get situated. Okay, so we're going to talk about what's going on this week in astrology. And I've got cats right over there on the porch that may end up coming out to say hello. I hope not, but they probably will. Anyway, um, so yeah, we've got a few things happening this week. One is a Mercury retrograde tomorrow, and we've also got a solar eclipse and a new moon on Saturday. We've got Father's Day on Sunday, and we've got a Neptune retrograde on Monday. How's that for all of you? Oh, my first cat, Cupid, just came out to say hello. I'll show you him, those of you on the video. There he is. <laughs> so... What I'm going to do today, though, is I'm going to tell you a little bit about what's coming, and then I'm going to tell you what's happening with each sun sign. And it can either be used for sun, Saturn, moon, rising sign, you know, it'll help understand the influence of what's going on. So, hey Cupid, are you a good boy? Yes, I don't think he's feeling too good. I think, um, you know, they say cats can be affected by coronavirus, and I think he does get affected by it. He definitely gets under the weather. I'm gonna just move you a little closer here. Hopefully you're not kilter, there we go. Okay. And anyway, so let's just go over what's going on. This is this week's astrology. Ta-da! And you're probably not gonna see it very long, but if you print out a chart or go on alabe.com, alab, Dot com, you can print out a current chart and see, you know, roughly what I'm talking about here. So that can help. I'm hoping I'm not covering the microphone on this. So for those of you who are just listening to audio, you're not really understanding what's going on here anymore. I'm sorry. But uh, yeah, the video you can see over at YouTube, just type in uh, Shelly Overton. Oh, sorry about that. And uh, our, I think it's Artful Shelly also. So... We have a 23 degree Leo rising here in Orlando. And that puts Pluto, Jupiter, and Saturn in the sixth house right now in Capricorn and Aquarius. We've got Neptune and Mars three degrees apart in Pisces. Neptune is early, he's 20, and then later is Mars. So he's just three degrees past. Now I have another cat. Oh my gosh, I'm being attacked by cats. Hi, Ginger. How are you? Watch out. And then, um, yeah, I think it must go with astrologers. They just attract cats, right, guys? <laughs> anyway, um, moon is 14 degrees of Taurus, and that means he's just five degrees past Uranus. And, of course, I will get back to what all this means. I'm just explaining it out of the gate. Sorry, I had an itch. <laughs> um, Venus at six degrees Gemini retrograde, sun at 26 degrees Gemini, really close to the north node at 29 Gemini retrograde. And then Mercury is at 14 degrees Cancer. Okay, so I'm gonna start off with Mercury and Cancer because Mercury and Cancer, I was sitting here thinking about this. Mercury is where you understand things on a electrical level where you can pick up what's going on with other people electrically. So that's like reading minds, basically. It's understanding the, um, the intention and the way people think. So you already feel like you know what they're thinking. In the sign of cancer, of course, that's ruled by the moon. So that's going to make us much more aware of what our moms are thinking and feeling. That we're much more keyed in to the energy of mom right now. And home, um, I'm doing this podcast from home. Of course, I work from home, though. My Saturn is in the fourth house of home and family. So... Uh, yeah, we've got a lot of that energy going on right now. Mercury is about to go retrograde, which means 
he appears to move backwards from our perspective in the solar system. And so he's going to go back over the energy that he just processed. What have we been committing ourselves to? And like, what, what kind of contracts are we assessing and committing to? What information or paperwork uh, do we need to do? Siblings, hey, Ginger, no, no. Yeah, like that's going to work. She's chasing a lizard around the yard and I don't want to harm any animals. Oh, oh that's hard to watch anyway. Um, one of the hazards of doing a podcast outside in nature, right? Okay. 29 degree north node in Gemini. This is an energy where we're learning about learning. We're learning about our thought processes. We're understanding our siblings. We're understanding our neighborhood, our community, our local community. It is very much about local. Um, we are understanding how we learn, how we teach. I want to throw something at her. Yeah, I just threw a paper towel. <laughs> no, she's going to the paper towel. That's good. <laughs> Um, yeah, so it's about the fate timing of things around neighbors and information, communications, things like that. The sun is lighting up this point. Of course, the nodes of fate connect to the collective. And when the sun, the body and the heavens that we rotate around in the solar system, all our focus is on that sun. It's up in the sky, we, the sun comes up, that's the, the day. What is the day? The day is the sun up to sundown. And so when we have that light, that shining presence on a point in the sky, we understand things in a clearer, more illuminated way. But it's also an energy of leadership, of where we look outside ourselves to, in a way, ground. And ground, in the metaphoric use of the word, we're obviously not grounding onto the sun, but we are feeling more peaceful and content or understanding within the core of our being. So the sun helps us know who we are. It's our ego. And of course, Leo is ruled by the sun. So it, and it's very about the personal energy of authority and our place in the world. Um, just an aside, the people born of Trump's generation have Pluto, deep subconscious psychology, in the sign of Leo. So that generation, the 70s, the people who are in the 70s, they were born in the 40s, are really understanding uh, more about their place one-on-one -on -one with other people and the psychology of how they interact one-on-one. -on -one. My parents are of that generation. Um, people just after, I would say, you know, to the late forties probably have that. And um, so, you know, even probably the early to mid fifties, from what I remember, um, Pluto goes into Virgo in the mid to late fifties. So we're gonna have a lot of people affected by that Pluto and Leo energy as we move forward. So the sun, um, wherever the sun is, affects that generation. And in Gemini, it means that it's about communications and how it comes across, what the story is, especially Leo. Leo wants to tell the story. Um, because the sun is approaching the nodes and we are, there are a lot of energies that are shifting in early July. Our country was founded in July, in, on July 4th. So as we move closer to that energy with the Neptune retrograde and Mercury retrograde and the fates, the nodes of fate, they are going to make this a very significant next couple of weeks because the energies are shifting and we are feeling an intensity around discussion, around a polarization, which is the Gemini energy, black and white, um, Jekyll and Hyde, this and that. And it brings in multiples. So it can show us a multiple side of our personality. There's two sides. I mean, I'm sitting here talking to you now, but I go in that house and then I become a daughter and a mother. And so, you know, it's kind of like we shift who we are. 
And this is really pronounced under Sun and Gemini. And then of course, Sun and Venus, which is also in Gemini. Gem uh, Venus is at six degrees retrograde in Gemini. And I don't think she goes direct until um, a little bit longer. She's not going direct soon, I don't believe. Let me double check. Um, yeah, she goes direct, well, Wednesday of next week. So we have about another week to deal with Venus retrograde. And that means that it's about women. You can entice or attract women into your life who are very, oh, <laughs> binary. I don't know what a good word. They have a dualistic nature. Um, they can be devious and duplicitous in the dark sense of Gemini. So be aware of that. In a retrograde, this is an interesting energy because Venus retrograde in Gemini, Mercury rules uh, health. It is an energy that right now is squaring uh, Mars and Neptune, which as you've listened in back, past podcasts, is really increasing the coronavirus. Um, the energy of Neptune is you know, the droplets, the liquids that the virus transports to other people with. And so having Venus squaring retrograde, Mercury rules health. And so Mercury is also answering to the liquids in Cancer. But Venus is about um, how we integrate the hygiene, the health in our world. What are our desires? And Venus retrograde means, oh, we want to go back to the desires, the desires of the past. Um, it's a feminine receptive energy. So we're much more in our emotions. We're not as much in our drive. But Mars is in Pisces. Mars is in his drive, but he's in that feminine water energy also of Pisces. So it is about the emotive quality, the connectedness. I mean, just an aside, my uncle, as you have heard last week, passed away. And we just had the funeral this week, a couple days ago, my sister came in, she's a Gemini. So Venus is sisters and Gemini is my sister. So she came in and it's also um, transport and travel. And she came in to go to the funeral. We went to the funeral and it, it connected us all there. I mean, we went over North of Tampa and it's a very small town. We found a restaurant that we could go to after the memorial. And everyone in the restaurant who was a, a customer was not wearing a mask. Everyone was intermingling. My family started out distancing. But of course, by the end, you know, people are hugging. They don't have their masks on because they have to eat. So you know, some of the rules that they set up for funerals and churches, I was at church also, uh, distance. So we did distance at the church. People had their masks on there. But when we went out to eat, everyone was at the same table. They were going back and forth talking. They were right next to each other at the table. And everyone in the restaurant was pretty much all the way around us. So you know that that's going to have an effect. I mean, it's just the fact of the matter. So we're, we're moving forward with this watery energy and Mars is moving forward. He's past Neptune. He took the energy of Neptune, which can, again, remember Pisces is opposite Virgo. Virgo is about health and hygiene. Pisces is breaking down barriers. So we are in this really strong cycle of breaking down barriers, but also contracting whatever the other person has, whatever the people in that environment have. So it's really um, a soup of energy right now that will, when Mars hits Aries, be expressed out into the world. It's born out into the world. So I see when Mars finally gets out into Aries, which is the end of June, June 28th, he's going fairly fast. Right now he's only at 23 and one week later, um, he's going to be getting out of the sign and it's, yeah, the 28th on Sunday. So We've got a lot of energy culminating going on behind the scenes. We've got Mercury in Cancer, which is closed off and internal. And then we've got a square of Mars and Neptune to the Sun and North Node, as well as the South Node, because obviously if it's squaring the North Node, the opposite is also in a 90 degree angle. So you have two 90 degree angles 
equal 180, which is an opposition. Yeah, and getting over to an inconjunct between Saturn at zero Aquarius, Jupiter at 25 Capricorn, and Pluto at 24 Capricorn, retrograde, and they are all three inconjunct or quincunx to uh, Sun and the nodes of fate. That is an energy that pretty much on January 12th and 13th was a significant hit to our way of understanding structure, our way of understanding the systems. So it's really affecting us right now, especially in our ego and our ability to move about sun in Gemini. And yeah, so it's going to be a stressor, not going to kid you until that sun gets out of Gemini. And interestingly, like I said, our president is a Gemini. So our, oh, I've never said that before about president. <laughs> He's a Gemini. And he's, he's feeling this. He's feeling this stress. He's feeling his structures are crumbling. His world is coming down. So to note, Gemini is 60, 60 degrees away from Leo, and his generation has that Pluto-Leo. So we also have that generation feeling a direct hit from the Pluto in Capricorn with an inconjunct the other side making, and I'll show you this if I can, making what is basically a yod or a finger of God. So here's Gemini, here's Leo. If you draw a line from the planets, Saturn, Jupiter, and, and uh, Pluto, down here, you draw 60 degrees over and back up, that is a finger of God. So the finger of God for that generation is a change of structure, a change of life. And they came in knowing, if you believe in, kind of, I believe, in a holding, holding place before you come into this life where you understand what you're going into on a general level. They came in with this energy uh, uh, knowing that it was going to hit their generation at some point. And so now's the time. On the other side of it, people born in late 60s, this energy is hitting them in a trine, which can also be a stressful aspect that will ultimately result in a positive change for you, but it's kind of like getting slapped in the face out of nowhere. So we've got that energy as well. Okay, what I'm gonna do now, just to break away from this, is I'm going to tell you what each sign can expect from some of these energies coming up for you. And so I'm gonna just rotate this and look at all the different signs on the horizon. Okay, Aries is, oh, I've got a cat fight over here. <laughs> Ginger. Stop that. Okay, leave him alone. Okay, the younger one is beating up the older peaceful cat. Oh well, be nice. Where are you? Cats and animals feel this energy too, by the way. Stay away from the base. Don't tip over my table, silly girl. Okay, Aries, sorry about that. So Aries, Aries, you have um, a strong energy coming up with Mars in your 12th house bringing up the subconscious, helping you to feel on a visceral level what's going on in your world and making you feel a little um, discombobulated, a little bit floaty. It's not a normal mode for Aries. You will feel better after the end of the month when Mars goes into your sign, but it will absolutely trigger you and a sense of needing to do something right away. You want to take action. That is the fire signs. They all are very driven. Aries, Leo, Sagittarius. So we'll see that coming up for Aries. We've got that final square. So those of you born in late Aries, closer to the uh, Taurus cusp, are going to feel this hit of Pluto, Jupiter, Saturn much more directly. And in your world, it will affect you in your career. You're gonna feel a shift and change and you really want more independence for yourselves. Okay, and see the new moon is in Cancer and that affects Aries in home and family. And you will feel uh, probably a lot more friction around the family because in a way you're birthing yourself. You're really you know, coming into your own. Mars is right there wanting you to take action and it's squaring Mercury. So you're also going to get a hit from that Mercury energy for a little bit. It will move forward. And just by sign, if anything, it's by sign. So Cancer to Aries, you will feel. That can also mean that there will be 
friction around uh, pets and neighbors and neighbors can speak up and say, hey, you're not doing this or that, and, or you're too loud in your apartment or whatever it is. I hope this isn't blocking the sound. I've got this right over me. I'm gonna put it underneath the computer so that I don't block the sound. Anyway, you know, out here doing it kind of al fresco, <laughs> see how it goes. And Taurus, Taurians, you've got the energy of moon and Uranus this week joined up and the moon will be out in about a day and a half. We'll also see, so that's Friday afternoon. You'll have this energy moving on into your house of work. There'll be more projects around work and earning money and love. It could be multiples of uh, relationships, options romantically, or things coming to a head on some level. Or the other thing is until the end of the month, you're going to have the Pisces energy uh, really bringing in something that's hidden. Maybe there's a friendship situation that's going on where you haven't really heard from a friend in a while. And when Mars goes into Aries, it will trigger something, maybe an anger over what you've had with that person in the past. And that can come up for you. But Uranus in your first house is a really strong hit to like stop relying on other people for money, stop relying on other people for your sense of self. It's about your personal power. It's about freedom to be who you are. And new ideas are coming in fast and furious. It's very inventive energy coming into your sense of self. So again, this is for sun, moon, uh, rising sign, and it can definitely affect you with your Saturn if your Saturn is in Taurus. Uh, let's see. So for you, the second house of money will be about connectedness to other people. There could be some travel, even if it's locally, it will be connecting to friends and siblings and local travel. And then of course the trine for you falls in your house of travel. So, you know, this is interesting because, um, like I said, my sister was just here. She's Gemini, but she has Saturn in Taurus. My mom has Saturn in Taurus. My daughter has Saturn in Taurus. My son has Saturn in Taurus. And they've all been doing a lot of traveling lately. Um, my son traveled up to where his college was about an hour north of where he's living right now and was interacting with the sailboat that he had made when he was in college. My daughter has been going on little day trips around the area and hiking and then we all went over for the funeral to the other side of the state uh, yesterday, so or day before yesterday. My sister was traveling. She lives in Phoenix. So there is a lot of travel for Taurus and Gemini right now. You will see that coming in. Uh, let's see. I'm sorry if I can't get a super thorough reading of each sign, but I do have limited time on my uh, platform here on Zoom. So right now I have about 20 minutes left. 15 to 20 minutes. So I'm going to try and get through all the signs in that in that amount of time. Uh, Gemini. Gemini, you've been going through a lot of intensity with family. I know, again, like I mentioned, my sister, she's having like this whole new awakening and not necessarily happy with it to having to take care of in-laws. She now lives with her in-laws since she retired and they're unhealthy and they're elderly. So she and her husband have been really um, basically taking care of them and for the end of their lives and um, neither are 100%. So they have special needs because of their health issues. Uh, that can be part of your world too if you're a Gemini or a Gemini moon or rising. But it is about you right now, definitely sun and Gemini is like, it's about me. You're not apologetic over wanting to have personal time. Completely understandable with all that energy focused on your house of other people and commitment to other people, that sense of duty has been at peak. Um, you've had Mars going your mid, at your midheaven. Uh, let me just double check, because this isn't, these houses on the chart I have are not divided exact to zero degrees, so I have to kind of shift them a little bit to know for sure which house everything is in and make sure that I'm telling you the right house. I did print, I printed an exact cusp chart so that I could just rotate it, but the printer ran out of paper. Mercury is coming retrograde. Don't forget, we're going to have a lot of these little glitches. I've had computer issues. My daughter, everyone I know has had something weird going on. My dad, he's like, why is this happening? I didn't understand this. Oh, that was a cool thing. 
my dad was just sitting in his den and the printer printed an email from months ago. It was something like October of last year. And it was associated with an account he had for insurance. And it just out of nowhere printed this insurance email and no one, no one in the house had sent it to print. It just automatically did it. And he's like, I don't understand. Why is that happening? And goes through all the potential reasons why that happened. And I'm just like, Mercury retrograde. Hello. But you know, my family is a little resistant to the idea of astrology having an effect. But I tell them, I always tell them and try. They just don't always listen. One of these days, there's going to be a significant event that I've told them about happening. And they're going to go, oh, yeah, you told us. But not yet. So, but I'm telling you. Mercury retrograding, Mercury and Cancer going back towards Gemini, Sun in Gemini, Nodes of Fate in Gemini, Venus retrograde in Gemini. Electronics are acting wackadoodle, okay? Um, my computer, every time that they try and release something on Apple, they have a new Apple phone, my phone bogs down, it says it's full, it says it has no memory left, it gets slow. All of the things that Apple does to our computers, right? So that can happen. In Gemini's, you definitely feel electrical energy and it can short circuit, you know? And the other thing is, interestingly enough, I'm a Virgo, Mercury ruled. My sister is a, Vir is a Gemini, Mercury ruled. And she spent yesterday telling us about all the accidents she's had tripping. And I used to be very accident prone growing up, but now it just translates to my automobile. I end up being accident prone in my car. But Virgos and Geminis definitely have more accident prone moments and that's Mercury. So just know that's kind of associated with the energy of Mercury in any form, whether it's the sign of Virgo, the sign of Gemini or a transit. And I don't want to talk too long about that, knock wood, because I get affected. So we're going to hole up in the house today and bless you, Mercury, wherever you are. I love you. I respect you. Okay, uh, moving on to cancer. Cancer is, again, home and family. Cancer's had a really rough time along with Capricorns, Aries, and Libra because their signs have been affected by this transit of Jupiter, Saturn, and Pluto and Capricorn. And so as these planets wrap up their time in that sign, Cap Cancer worlds are being uprooted. It's like, just take their little world and yank it out and all the roots are exposed. And it's really difficult for Cancerians to integrate what's going on. I mean, my mom's a Cancer. I use these as examples because I find when I listen to podcasts, it's more interesting to hear it related to real world examples. And so I'm really trying to do that more for all of my listeners. I hope you appreciate that. I'm Drawing on my personal life and as a Virgo, it's kind of difficult, Mars and Cancer, to expose myself. So I appreciate that. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, my mom really, her world is being rocked in. Oh, look, there's my cat. Look at Ginger. You all get to see her. Wow, that's so cool. Hey, Ginger, what are you doing up there? I see you. Yes, I see you. Anyway, uh, we're going to really feel the effects of the Cancer people of what's going on and uh, really the roots being yanked out of our worlds. And I know I personally, uh, when my daughter canceled going to the school she was going to down south, and I was right in the middle of the move thinking of moving down there. And then she's like, no, that's how I ended up back here. And I'm at my parents right now. And I can't really get out to move anywhere currently. So we're going to just ride out Corona. But that's part of what's going on. And for cancers, coronavirus is affecting you in your marriages, in your partnerships. And um, anyway, yeah, she's on the video. She's crawling across the screen. <laughs> it's my dad pointing out that the cat's up in the tree. I hope she's not above me. No. Oh, there she is. She's coming back down. Okay, it's a good thing. But yeah, you're feeling it in your marriages. You're feeling it in partnerships and what's going on. I know I've had business partnerships that have definitely felt the effect of this virus. And um, you know, you just you just get on with things that you can. You go on the computer. You do what you can do on the computer. 
uh, see if there's anything else I can tell cancer. So the retrograde of mercury is going to affect you and how you interact with family, how you think of things. Um, you may come out of your shell a little bit more. You're going to speak your mind a little bit more. Not looking forward to that because, you know, it's my mom. But, and I also have Mars and cancer, which, you know, is conflict. So when you have, you know, serious planets and cancer, you can be a little bit more serious if you're a cancer. You know, you're not really having as much fun. Now, remember, Leo's in the second house if you have a cancer rising. Leo's are fun loving. They want to be out and about. You know, cancer people can look youthful long times into their future. You know, my mom, I look at her, she's pushing 80 and she dyes her hair and I forget that she's almost 80 because she, you know, I don't dye my hair. She dyes her hair. And, you know, I go out and I'm like, I'm grayer than my mother, <laughs> but it's okay because she really, she's very youthful. And that's that Leo energy in the second house of the body. You know, you keep a youthful appearance. Leo, Leos, you're going to feel this in your work environment, in your workplace. People are going to stress you out. The structure of what's going on for you is not stable. It's just the way it is. You know, we're in this year of upheaval, and I call it the lost year. It really is like the lost year. You know, we, we are somewhat lost. The Mars-Neptune conjunction makes us very um, scattered and daydreamy. I've felt that a lot lately. And, you know, especially moon on Uranus. Uranus is a daydreamer of, he's a visionary. Okay, so wherever Uranus is makes us very visionary. And for Leos, it's squaring your sun. So you've got this energy that really, if you think about it, Leo, you're the ruler of the opposite sign of Leo, Aquarius, is Uranus. And now that ruler is squaring you. So you've got uh, the opposing energy in square instead of, say, at a positive transit, uh, like a more like a sextile or something, it's squaring you. So there's this strong detachment from connectedness. It could be a romantic detachment. Um, friends disappear. My son is a Leo. He had to leave his college in the last semester. All his friends literally disappeared. Um, you know, it's, it's stressful. We've got Gemini in your house of friends from work. So it's a great time. And this is true about him as well, being a Leo great time to make new friends. You've got the Gemini energy. You're more communicative with people in a new environment that is more associated with who you are as a person and, you know, what your life purpose is. So remember the 11th house, the Aquarius house for Leo rising, um, the Aquarius house is a Gemini house. And then the one before is your career. So if you had the career house on your first and the next house would be the can people you connect to from your career, also money from career. It's the second house or Venus energy. If you put, I'll just, I'll just show, so you have to reverse it. I apologize, but there's Taurus. Actually, let me do it this way. Leo. So Leo would be on the horizon and that would put um, Virgo down here. Oh, no, I'm sorry. That's wrong. <laughs> there, career. Taurus's career house, and that puts the Gemini in your second of people you connect to in uh, romance. It's complex. I'm sorry if you're a little confused by that. But basically what I wanted to tell you is every cusp, like if you put any energy on the horizon, on the cusp, that becomes the energy of the first house, the second house, third house. And so you can glean even more information from it by doing that. That's all I'm saying. So, uh, yeah, Leos are feeling this up in their travel sector. They're feeling like they want to travel more because they've got, let me just, like I said, double check that Gemini cancer. Yeah. And so, um, Taurus is up there squaring their sense of identity and you're wanting to maybe shift how you look at work and career as well. Virgo, you've got Virgo, uh, with the Pisces is opposite Virgo. And that means that also work and marriage or love or partners are taking a hit. And let me see where that is. Okay, Virgo, yeah. So Virgos, you're feeling a lot more flaky because the Virgo energy is about groundedness and health 
and right now there is no health there is no groundedness for virgos and you've got the gemini energy square in your midheaven that's the career sector so you've got the nodes of fate up there there are options there are multiple options for you in career and then mercury is in cancer around the home this is people that associate with your career and honestly that has a resonance for me personally because excuse me my career is in the home and now i have mother around in my home career environment so you're definitely having to deal with communications with family members if you're a virgo you've got the stress of the capricorn aspects trining your your identity and it's children um it's family it can be how it looks money from family and sorry my nose is itching out here <laughs> okay and libra we're gonna go we're moving a little faster i don't know how much longer i have on this i apologize if i get cut off but um i will say it quickly librans you're feeling this in the effects of um having a lot of friends that you can go see and uh, connect to far away that's where your gemini is the taurus energy is affecting you because taurus is an inconjunct energy to or quincunx uh to libra so this is marriage and partnership you're having more stressors than you would like in commitments and then uh the moon will be going into gemini soon which is a much more cooperative energy for you much better for your social life and then um, this also puts Capricorn in your house of home and family. So that's where your stress is right now in marriage and partnership, a little bit of work, and then home and family. Scorpio, direct opposition to the Taurus, Uranus, and the moon today. And so you're feeling a little bit on edge about money and connectedness to other people. Boy, this is a hot mess look. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to take a second out and get my hair put up. Not to let things go away. Yeah, that's a good look. <laughs> anyway, there we go. Okay. So, oh, so definitely something coming in. This is always my spirit guide energy. Saying, oh, good. Daughter went to Starbucks, showing it off. Good job. Yeah, so we've got the, um, how we think about things, how we express ourselves in the world. Education, communication, Gemini energy is where your Pluto is right now, Scorpio. and and that's also neighbors and community. And that's really restrictive. You know, where are those people? Where are those friends? Where's the community? You're feeling a little cut off from society, especially with the quincunx to the sun and Gemini. It's like out there, you want to connect, you want to go, trust me, I feel this Scorpio rising, I want to go. And I'm feeling really restricted right now. And you know, it's Neptune in Pisces, it's retrograde. I did mention that I was gonna talk about that. I'm running out of time. So the Neptune retrograde is gonna affect us with, um, it's going to make us feel more aware, more practical, more pragmatic in everything that we're doing. And so we're gonna feel much more aware of true nature, what people are doing and not as pushover. So that's coming up for about five months. Okay, uh, Sagittarius. It's about money. It's about feeling restricted in your money house. It's about feeling restricted with authority that you're not feeling free to go earn the money the way you want to. And really, you know, having Saturn and Aquarius, your freedom is coming up. You want to be free. You want to do entrepreneurial endeavors, but right now you're back and forth between the structure of an actual job that pays money and the insurance probably because that's Capricorn and also the freedom to do who you are. It will be better at the end of the year. You're gonna go off into the Aquarius realms once Saturn and Jupiter hit Aquarius at the end of the year, much better. I mean, this is probably the few people who will be good for are the Sagittarians or people influenced by Sagittarius in their money house. And Sagittarius rising, Sagittarius sun. Um, you will take a hit in financial areas to a degree in housing or even education if you're in education the end of the year is gonna be a little tougher and you're gonna to have to do something on your own that the structure will no longer support um, the freedom that Saturn and Jupiter, Jupiter rules education. So that freedom, it's not about money motivating you, it's about the good of the collective. So that's the shift we're all having towards the end of the year. Capricorn, I'm really racing because I, I don't know how much time, I may only have less than a minute. 
Capricorn, still, your sense of self, your ego, your identity, and work are being affected. And Taurus affects you in your home and family life. So much more independence around home and family, not wanting to do everything for them. And listen to that energy. Pisces is in your house of uh, communication. So you're much more intuitive right now. Aquarius, it's the 12th house for the restriction. You're feeling a little more psychologically restricted and, and uh, wanting to hide and, and pull away from people a bit more. And that's going to be the story for a while until some of those planets move on into Aquarius and you can be much more social at the end of the year. Um, and that also goes for the Pisces energy that's entering in your house of money. You're pulling up doing your job. My son, the Aquarius rising, he's in his room working on his new job. So we're all doing that. And then Pisces, of course, Neptune, Mars, you've been a little bit more agitated with people lately. Neptune retrograding is going to make you much more capable of understanding your own personal motivations and your sense of self. Um, the Gemini energy for you right now, let's see, Pisces, it's squaring you in your home and family sector. So uh, people are saying things that are hurting your feelings. So, you know, if you have to hold up, please do. Anyway, I, I'm still going, but I don't know how much longer. So if you want a reading, please do connect with me. Um, you can contact me at angeliczodiac.com or on Facebook, Angelic Zodiac. Look at the website. That's where a lot of links are. You can connect to everything I'm doing there. And please do come back next week. Call me if you need something or, I mean, you know, metaphorically call me. You can call me after you sign up whatever. And then definitely sign up for the newsletter. I'm going to be doing much more newsletters and you'll get them right in your inbox. So please do that. And it's good talking to you again this week. Take care. That's the show for today. Bye. You have been listening to the Astro Energy Astrology Show. If you would like to get a private reading with Shelly, please contact her through angeliczodiac.com or at so at angeliczodiac.com. You can arrange a reading through the Angelic Zodiac page at facebook.com as well. Check out Angelic Zodiac on Instagram for up-to-date information on events, discounts, blogs and planetary transits at Angelic Zodiac 1 on Instagram. If you would like to see Shelley's art, shellyovertime.com or for astrology art, go to astroart.net. Music provided by Kevin MacLeod at incompertech.com. Other music will be credited within the show. Advice given in the program is intended for entertainment purposes only. Join us here next week for more of the Astro Energy Astrology Show podcast. You can find us on iTunes and Google Play, and where podcasts are accessed.